So Japan is famous for many things. It's the land of big robots, beautiful landscapes, and small singing kittens. It's also famous, believe it or not, for its delicious, truly delicious food. Now, I am a Swedish person and a vegetarian. I have been since I was about 15 years old. Before that, I was Spanish and pescatarian, which means that I ate fish, but no meat. I mean, I did try it every once in a while, but basically grew up without meat. So I have been a vegetarian for a pretty long time now. At this point, I have gotten used to not being able to maintain an erection, you know, but more on that later on in the video. My past year in Japan, though, <laughs> I wasn't a very good vegetarian. I betrayed my veggie people by occasionally eating both meat and fish while eating out. My friends in Tokyo might be surprised to hear that I consider myself a vegetarian because I was a very bad one in Tokyo. This is because it is ridiculously difficult to be a vegetarian in Japan, at least compared to being one here in Sweden. Being vegetarian in Sweden is terribly easy. Pretty much every food place here, if you go out eating, will have a vegan or vegetarian option on the menu. So eating out is usually not a problem. The only restaurants I've gone to which didn't have a vegetarian option on the menu have been incredibly fancy ones. I remember having to order, you know, salads from the side menu and just munch on lettuce like the good little herbivore that I am, you know. The good thing is but that I am by no stretch of any imagination rich. <laughs> so these very expensive restaurant visits are very few and far fucking between. It's not just eating out though, is it? Sometimes you want to cook yourself, perhaps. <laughs> or some food, ha. Swedish people have, especially the last couple of years I feel, become more keen on eating plant-based proteins and meat substitutes. There are now entire sections in the bigger grocery stores dedicated to vegan protein products. Being vegan is very trendy in Sweden. I've tried many of these products and some are not quite there yet. <laughs> I have yet tasted a vegan cheese, for instance, that didn't want to make me suck on teats directly. But I would say that most of this is actually pretty good. Doesn't taste like meat at all, but still. I especially like this, form bar fash. It's like minced meat, but vegan. Much, much better than sex. All of this makes it very, very easy to get by without eating both meat and fish in Sweden. So what is it like in Japan? There is a Japanese expression, soushokudanshi, or herbivore man, <laughs> which describes a sort of unassertive kind of guy who is usually not on the hunt for the pussy. <laughs> also implied in this expression is the inability of these men to maintain or even get an erection because of their lack of meat consumption. <laughs> now, this hit me hard, obviously. So for the past month and a half, I have eaten nothing but pea Penises. Still can't fucking get it up though, but you know. That sadly is kind of the view of vegetarianism in Japan, uh, or at least has been. Many people don't seem to get the concept. They see no reason why, why wouldn't you eat meat? I think things are changing though. Uh, there is a, um, now this is a weird fucking story. I <laughs> so the language school I went to in Tokyo is located in Shin Okubo, which is the Korean town district of Tokyo. Now, if you don't know, Korean food is both fucking delicious, but also very uh, meat based. Pretty much none of the restaurants in the area had any vegetarian options on their menus. Many even proudly, you know, advertised the meat products with big pigs and whatnot on the signs outside. And I never really understood the sort of advertisement of very cute pigs for a place which serves dead pigs. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was a part of a little project that my school was involved in. The mayor of Shinokubo and a, a bunch of the owners of the local restaurants asked for help from the uh, vegetarian or vegan foreign students at the school if they could help with sort of changing the local restaurants menus to be more accommodating to vegetarian or vegan foreigners. Back then we still thought that the Tokyo Olympics would happen in 2020. <laughs> we were uh, naive back then. Um, so they wanted to sort of make the whole area more friendly to foreigners. So I went to a bunch of meetings with these people, you know, very professional Japanese men in suits and everything. They gave us business cards. This was back in level two of me studying Japanese, so I understood absolutely nothing. <laughs> but we helped them sort of point out the menu items on the menus which would be or would not be suitable for either vegans or vegetarians or pescatarians and stuff like that. I think that is a sign that things might be heading in the right direction. The more Tokyo opens up to, you know, other people from around the world, the more vegetarianism and veganism will definitely creep into the culture as well, I think. I think this was a really nice initiative, not just by the school, but by the local, you know, by the mayor and the restaurants and everything. So I was happy to fucking help, yes. But as it is now though, there are hardly any vegetarian, let alone vegan options in, I'd say, most restaurants.
restaurants, even in Tokyo. This is mainly the reason why I did eat meat and fish in Japan. I didn't do it because I suddenly decided, you know, fuck animals. <laughs> but because when all of your friends want to go to a restaurant close, by, uh, close to the school and you barely know anyone and you don't want to force 10 random people uh, to try to find in maybe a different place with vegan options on the menu and you're starving after a long day at school, I just ordered what was there, basically. Judge me all you like, everyone. So if you are very squeamish about having people around you eat meat or seeing people eat meat, you might not like this part of living in Japan. Cooking at home, on the other hand, lordy, it was glorious. I mean, there are so many... The amount of deep fried vegetables and the tofu and stuff that you can get in Japanese supermarkets that you can't get in Sweden makes, you know, cooking vegan and vegetarian stuff at home really easy. Now that I'm done bashing Tokyo for being not very friendly to vegans, of course there are restaurants in Tokyo catering to vegans. You kind of have to know about them though, as they are very few and far between. There's the Mr. Farmer chain of restaurants. There are a couple around Tokyo. This is the one in Shinjuku. They don't all look like this, but this one is cool with all its plants and stuff hanging from the ceiling. Say hello to my awkwardly waving friend Valeria, by the way. <laughs> it's semi-expensive, I suppose, but you get what you pay for, as the burgers and the salads are insanely good, and the free 65-inch TV you get with every meal is a nice bonus. Speaking of vegan burgers, there is also this place, Ripple Tokyo, I think it was called. It's somewhere between Shinokubo and Shinjuku. Very small, cozy little place with a lovely toilet full of interesting stickers. I spent way too long in here. It's clear that these vegan places are popular among foreigners, by the way. You see lots of English everywhere. The more vegan options on the menu, the more likely it is to have English on the menu as well. I think the staff here speaks a bit of English as well. Don't assume that though, just because you, I said so. <laughs> if you want some vegan ramen, which goodness of course you do, since it can be tricky to find because the broth is usually very much not vegan. There is this place, Ahuri Ramen in Ikebukuro Station. I think they have other restaurants around Tokyo as well. They only have one vegan option, the rainbow vegan ramen, but it was delicious and looked even better than it tasted almost. I really like this place. I like busy crammed spaces. This was filmed before the pandemic by the way, as you probably can tell. I miss being squeezed by strangers. <laughs> Another fully vegan ramen place is this one in Tokyo Station. Tea's Tan Tan Tokyo. There is one in Ikebukuro as well, apparently. This brand also makes a vegan cup ramen you can buy in grocery stores. And it, I didn't know this when I showed up here. I just recognized the logo. You know? I had my last meal with the gang in Tokyo, in this place, on the day that I left Japan. So the broth got diluted with everyone's tears, you know. Mine were of sadness and despair, while my companions were of relief and schadenfreude. And finally, if you are interested in a vegan version of washoku, or more traditional Japanese food, there is a ryokan just outside of Kyoto that will make you wonderful meals without any animal products if you send them an email and just ask politely, I guess. The ryokan is called Momijia and I loved everything about it. You can see more from this place in my little Kyoto series of videos if you're interested. Obviously this food was among the top 10 things that I've ever had in my mouth and my mouth has seen some action. <laughs> now there are of course more, more places like this that I really want to visit in Tokyo, uh, especially um, a vegan bakery in Setagaya, I think. Uh, Universal Bakes and cafe. So the difference between uh, Sweden and Japan in terms of vegetarianism and veganism is staggering. <laughs> I thought it was a little bit interesting then. At the IKEA in Harajuku I found these plant-based instant ramen cups. Sort of a perfect mix of what this video was all about. It doesn't really fit but it's about Sweden and Japan and the vegan thing so I added it in the video. It wasn't very tasty. I'm sorry about this video maybe this was sort of a bit of a you know detour from the usual stuff that I put out but um, if you enjoyed it please do leave it a like and everything you know the drill and i will see you in the next one everyone the next video will not be about vegetarianism yay thank you okay bye